Fighting the ivory trade is a constant challenge as those who wish to sell white gold put elephants under further pressure. Tragically, the ivory trade has a long and bloody history. Increasing poaching levels as well as loss of habitat are threatening the survival of the African elephant population. In Kenya and, and in Africa generally, there's a lot of poverty. And as long as people can have money from killing an elephant and they can sell that tusk for money, then obviously the poaching is going to go on. So the greatest challenge is to try and get the ivory trade banned globally. And of course, as long as there's no longer a market for ivory, then there won't be any reason to kill an elephant. This has resulted to many baby elephants being orphaned at a very tender age when they are still dependent on their mothers. Because elephants are actually milk dependent for the first three years of life and uh, elephant's milk is very specific. They can't handle the fat in cow's milk so uh, all the fat in the diet has to be vegetable in origin and even that's not perfect. And so we have a lot of problems raising the infant elephants, bearing in mind that at any age an elephant duplicates a human. The David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust was founded in 1977 by Daphne Sheldrick, widow of one of Kenya's best-known game warden, David Sheldrick. The trust rescues orphaned elephants, rehabilitates them and wins them back into the wild. Currently, 31 calves are under their specialized care. At the orphanage, they receive extremely focused treatment. Personal care is available 24 hours a day from highly dedicated staff. Away from the wild, man becomes the surrogate mother to the calves. So we try to replicate the mother. We can't do exactly what a mother does. We try to do something close to. They need very close attention. And so that's why we need to be with them all day, all night. The young ones are fed on demand, just whenever they feel like. Uh, they start to push you around, and so you have to feed them the milk. The rest are fed on intervals of every three hours. And so these are things that the mother would do. According to Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, the greatest challenge is the lucrative illegal ivory trade. She is hopeful that with the latest announcement by the Chinese president, to help in the fight against poaching, things will change. There are very encouraging signs that that might come about. Um, the, the Chinese president has uh, pledged to try and stop the ivory trade and to, to work in conjunction with the United States and other committed countries to try and halt the, the, the killing of elephants for ivory. So, you know, there are a lot of encouraging signs that things are working in the right direction, but at the same time, time is not on our side. The public is welcomed to view calves to the largest land mammal from 11 to 12, where they are introduced to the youngest nursery elephants, a rare chance even in the wild. <coughs> Dr. Daphne has worked with elephants for 50 years and says there is a lot to learn from them. With elephants you reap what you sow and it's very important when you're raising them to only treat them with tender loving care and kindness which is what they would have expected from their own elephant family. Never to harm them or beat them because elephants bear grudges and they will settle the score later and they're very powerful animals so you reap what you sow and you must only treat them with tender loving care and leave the discipline because they need to be taught how to behave in elephant society, but that comes from the elephants themselves. Eventually, the calves are moved to Savo, where they are carefully reintroduced into the wild. Far more elephants have been lost in the region. In the 60s, there were 46,000 elephants in the ecosystem, which is twice the size of the park itself. That's an area of 16,000 square miles. The population today is between 11 and 12,000. So that's a big drop, and elephants are being poached still for ivory on a massive scale. This is a cry begging for action, and not tomorrow, but now. Otherwise, we will lose the rhinos and the elephants by 2030. Marete Selvin, GBS News.